This will be the software portion for the Asus ROG Claymore 2. The software portion is using Asus's Armor Crate, and I do know that a lot of people have mixed feelings about Armor Crate and its usages. This is just going to be the basics of what you can do with it and whether you actually like it or not. That's up to you to decide at a later date, but I'm going to let you know what you can do. And right now I have the Claymore 2 plugged into my computer because in order to actually activate Armor Crate, you will need a hardwired connection from your Claymore 2 to your PC. I'm going to start things off over here on our devices section. As you can see, it's got our keyboard layout right here and it's saying, hey, here are all the keys that you have at your access. What would you like to do? Well, we have our media keys that are part of our numpad that's detachable. If I select that, we can change what that M shortcut key will actually do. Now, that's not just for these keys here. We can do that for any key. We can select what we would like it to do. Likewise, on this screen, we can also disable Alt Tab and Alt F4, because I think we've all been there where we're gaming or doing something work related and don't want to be able to do that. Well, maybe Alt Tab you want to keep enabled, but definitely Alt F4 you can turn off. That's all located here under our keys section. Next, we move over to the RGB indicator. At the top of your Claymore 2, you have lighting effect for either battery mode or sync with keyboard light. And depending on what lighting effects you have situated is what will happen when you change from sync with keyboard light or change to battery mode. Moving on, we have our lighting. This is gonna be where you can do all of those really cool lighting effects. Right now I have it on static, which just has the lights, has the keyboard RGB lights, just static, they're on. I have selected a singular color, in this case red. If I click on here, I can change anywhere in this color wheel, or if I know the actual key codes for it, I can type it in there and generate the color, the color that I would like. I also have it at 50% brightness. You can control your brightness from here, but you can also do that from the keyboard itself. Moving on, we've got our breathing effect. Now our breathing effect is going to kind of be pulsating on the keyboard. Now we have a single effect right now showing, but if we wanted to, I can select double. And what that will do is that will change in this case between red and this purple color, and it will just pulsate on the keyboard with those colors. We can also select random right here, and then it will just randomly pulsate colors on the keyboard. Likewise, we also have our LED brightness, 50%, and then we could select our speed. Right now it's at normal, but if we wanted to, we could move that up to fast and it will pulsate much faster. Now I'm going to bring this back down to normal because, well, that's kind of where I like things. We're going to move on to color cycle. And here we go. This is our color cycle. There's no option for you to change the colors. You can change your LED brightness and your speed just like you could before. Coming across, we have our rainbow effect. Now the rainbow effect is going to be partitioned on segments of your actual keyboard. Mirroring those segments, you have purple, blue, aqua, green, yellow, orange, red. You can plus or minus to add more segments. You can change an individual color. Like let's say we don't like this red, we could change that to a different color and then that segment will change. And then again, brightness and speed. We also have directional options. So this is gonna be the first time that we get some directional options. Right now we're going from left to right, but we can change it from right to left. And that will change which way our colors are actually flowing. We're gonna change it back to what we had before. And then we have our thickness. Right now it's on the thickest, but we could change it to normal and it will shrink the amount of space that those take up. Now we're gonna put it back onto thick. Scrolling back up, we are going to come to reactive. Now, right now it's on random. It has held onto the random pattern uh, that I set originally, but what this will do is if I touch any of the keys on the keyboard, they will randomly light up and the random will also change the color. So I don't have a set color palette. They will just randomly cycle. We have our brightness and speed again, and we're gonna come down to our ripple effect. Tap on the keyboard. You'll see that when I tap on things, it ripples across the keyboard. It has random, or you can change it to a pattern so that specific colors happen at specific intervals. You have your brightness, you have your speed, and then your thickness again. Coming down, we have Starry Night. And what this is going to do is just randomly light up letters. Whether you type on them or not, the letters and numbers will just randomly turn on and off. Right now I have 
background turned off, but if you turn background on, that will turn on the LED backlights to your keycaps instead of just the letter light. We also have random, or we can change our two-tone colors, or we can have a single color. We have our brightness setting, as usual. I have it at 50, and then speed, just like with everything else. Quicksand. Again, we have this set as a random effect, but what quicksand will do is starting at the top, it will blend down into the keyboard, kind of like you're sinking in quicksand. You've got your top level, and then as pressure builds, it sinks down towards your other keys. You have your brightness settings, you have your speed settings, and you have your directional. Right now I have from top to bottom, but we could swap that from bottom to top, and it looks like a little pyramid going the opposite direction. We're gonna put it back down to direction going down. Moving on, we have current, and current's going to light up your keys from left to right, kind of looking like a little, little wave pattern. It's not as random as Starlight, Starry Night was, but it's still randomly lighting up things as it goes across. You have the ability to select a single color, or you can have it on random. For pattern, you can have single, double, or random, so that's gonna be your coloration as well. Brightness and speed. We have raindrops, and that's going to be lighting effects that go down a row of your keyboard, looking like rain. Again, we have random, right here we have background, so just like before, if we select single, that will light up the background. We can change that color if we don't want our background color to be bright white. We're just gonna turn that off to make it easier to see the pattern as it falls. Again, random colorization, LED, we have our LED brightness, and we have our speed. Moving on from our lighting tab, we actually have our power options. Wireless power saving options, right now you can see it's charging, it's at 93%. Lighting altered when battery percent reaches, and then it will adjust the lighting effects when you reach specific points of power left in the keyboard. So you got 50%, you got 25%, and never switch to sleep mode after being idle for. This is in minutes, I have it for three minutes, helps save the battery. If you don't type on the keyboard, after three minutes, it goes into power saver mode. And then power saver mode on, which is turn off the keyboard LEDs or decrease the LED brightness. So I just have them turn off the LEDs altogether. And last tab over here is our firmware. In the upper right hand corner here, you can see that we were on default. And what this is, is the default profile for my Claymore 2. You can have up to six, because you have a default and then five, individual profiles for the Claymore 2. Selecting the three dots next to your profile, you can export it, duplicate it, rename it, create a new profile, create new, import, sync all profiles, and reset all profiles. And that's the majority of what you can do to change your Claymore 2 using Armor Crate. However, if we come over to our devices and select this, we have a secondary tab for our macros. If we wanted to set up a macro using Armor Crate, this is where we would do it. We can simply select record and then type what we want to be recorded and then stop and then that will create a macro, which we can save, edit, or cancel, or we can clear it. I'm going to cancel because we don't want to actually save that. We can insert a macro. We can select options here, and it will show us record delay, fix delay, toggle. There are lots of things that you can do with macros, and if you're of the type that needs them, this is where you can kind of get a little more advanced than what you can do just from the keyboard itself. Coming down with our rest of our options in Armor Crate, we'll just breeze through these very quickly. You have Aura Sync, you need to have a compatible device. A Claymore 2 is a compatible device. You have your Aura Effects right here, and then Aura Performance Mode, Extra Steps. Not gonna get into it too much. You have access to your gaming library. Here you can see some of the games that I have. If I select them from here, they will launch the game, as you see right there. Moving down, we have our Scenario Profiles. So right now I have one set up for Diablo 3 and one for Lost Ark. What this will allow you to do is pick a specific lighting cue that you'd like for that game. So if I were to create a new one, I will call this call this Valheim, and then it's going to show me the system configuration. So volume, input device, and then we have our color. So if I don't want static, maybe I want Starry Night, when I start up Valheim, it will change to volume 28, use the Claymore, Starry Night. Hit save. Now I have a third, now I have a third option set up. You've got Featured, which is really them just pushing information to you. You have News. Again, this is just going to be informative information for you. Really don't come down here. You've got your User Center, which you will need to create an account for. And then you've got your Settings, which will allow you to choose the theme. You've got the ROG theme. You've got the 
gaming armor crate theme, and then you've got your Asus armor crate theming. You have your choose armor crate landing page, so you can select which one of these tabs you actually want to end up on. I generally keep it on Aura Sync because that's where I'm going to go. You've got your update center, and then you've got about. And that has been a more in-depth look than I thought I would do for the armor crate software for the ROG Claymore 2.